I'm Oscar. And I'm Dan. And today we're in Armenia. <laughs> we're Oscar and Dan, two Swedish boys trying to see as much of the world as possible. This year, our goal is to hit 100 countries. And in our previous video, we showed you our long and complicated travel day from Azerbaijan to Armenia. The next morning, or <clears throat> afternoon, we woke up in the capital of Yerevan. God, we were so tired yesterday, so we just went straight to sleep. Taking two flights, walking around the whole day, and the heat takes it all out of you, I'm telling you. Now we're in country 92 and we're ready to show you. Hello, Susie Eslin. <laughs> Didn't know you had that in you. Get out of here. On that note, uh, we're very excited to explore Armenia, our 92nd country. Good morning. You're from Armenia, say something fun. <laughs> so we are about to head to lunch and then we're going to a bunch of monasteries today. It is scorching hot here. Today it's actually scorching. We're gonna try to stay in the shade as much as possible and explore the city in the evening when it's a little cooler. So let's go. So we rented a car here in Armenia too. So we're gonna be driving around the country, going on day trips from Yerevan. We're gonna be staying there. And we just stopped for our first stop. We just stopped at our first stop? No way. <laughs> The view here is amazing with Yerevan over there, the mountains here, it's very hot and dry. I always pictured Armenia as quite a green country, but... I guess most of the pictures we see are from like spring, right? Yeah. Sadly, there's so much trash down here, all the way. Plastic, glass. Why? The Armenian language is so cool. It's actually an Indo-European language, so it's related to the other languages in Europe, as well as Persian and uh, Hindi. But it's a completely separate branch, so it's very different from all the other ones. And it has its own unique writing system, which just looks so cool. It's like, it looks like little tongs, like, in different shapes. It's very cute. God, this road is wow. rough. It hasn't been repaired in a few years, for decades. Or but the views make up for it. Wow. Okay. I love that we were complaining about that road. <laughs> yeah, this feels like, uh, you know in every movie when the characters go to Mexico and end up in some super fake tiny village where there's loads of mafia. Will you calm down? This thing is ginormous. This feels exactly like those sets look. Alright, we made it to our first monastery, a very famous site here, I can already tell. There's a lot of tourists behind you. Garni Temple is a Greek temple built before Armenia became the world's first Christian nation. So this temple was built in the 60s. The literal 60s. The original 60s. 0060. <laughs> which is just insane. Although it seems like most of this temple was actually built in the 1960s because that's when it was reconstructed. So here you can see the new rock and the old rock. This almost looks like Arabic, but or Farsi or something. Yeah, it could be Farsi. Wow. Farsi, Farsi. Yeah, it is Farsi. Yeah. It is Farsi and it is written. I am standing on my feet. Here is my sleeping place. God, what is going to happen to me? Bahram from Shiraz. Oh, wow. wow. Thank you. Do you. Are you Irene? Or? Yes, I'm Irene. Okay, cool. cool. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. I mean, the fact that this temple is 2,000 years old and all is cool, I guess, but the fact that I'm currently touching the same stone that Chloe and Kim Kardashian have touched is mind-boggling. <laughs> Russian and Farsi. Yeah, I think sh she knows what's up. Oh. Who else loved jumping in those as a kid? <laughs> oh, so nice. It's so cooling. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. How, how do we say thank, thank you, you thank in you. Armenian? Shnurakalutsun. Uh, wow. Shnurakalutsun. Kalutsun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
So from a pagan Greek temple, we're moving on to after Armenia was uh, christened. I guess that's the word, right? When Christianity was introduced. Armenia was actually the first country in the world to make Christianity its state religion. So that's really cool. Now we're here at a monastery. It's from the fourth century, we read. Our second stop of the day is the Gehard, we don't know how to pronounce it, Ge I think it's Gehard Monastery. Also an incredibly beautiful location, but unfortunately the main dome is under construction, but it's still beautiful. It's not under construction, Dan, it's under restoration. Learn. That's what the comments are gonna say. <laughs> Okay, how is it? Okay, oh, you want to try? Pomegranate, mm. apricot. Mm. No, 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 yeah, yeah, I know cough. Ah. Oh, cough syrup. Morba. Morba. Okay. Honey, honey, honey. I'm just looking oh, at the sunscreen off my hand. Cherry, plum. <laughs> I don't know what to make of your face. Cherry. Yeah, yeah, it is. Can we get this one? I forgot. My pad. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's no, it's chewy. Try it's it. It's just more intense, I guess. Oh. Like more, more concentrated. Yeah. It's like dried fruit, but in a, in a flat shape. <laughs> Tasteless form. Tasteless form. Alright, we're heading back. Yeah, I feel like I just need to take a moment to express my appreciation for Apple Car because it literally saves relationships. Where no one has to sit and like navigate and it just messes it up all the time. Yeah, it's a lot easier with this. Sweet! Yay. We just spent some time in the hotel room. I was working on a video and we were resting a little bit because we are dead after walking around in this heat. Now it's almost sunset. It's close to 7 p.m. And it's still like, I think 35 degrees outside. It's insane. <laughs> so hot. This is Freedom slash what was the other name for it? Republic Square. We'll put it here. Republic Square. It's right by our hotel. Yeah, that's it? so beautiful. I feel like I've said beautiful a lot. It's stunning. But it is hell to drive in this roundabout in the middle. Yeah. I can tell you that. I think I've asked three people already to tell me how to say thank you in Armenian. Because every time I'm like, that can't be a real word. <laughs> Like, it's so hard. The Blue Mosque in the first Christian country in the world. It's kind of crazy to think that this country turned Christian before Islam even existed. It's a really tranquil, nice garden in here. Found our restaurant. Oh, something in the We were looking for so. a restaurant. <laughs> we found it. It's in there. <laughs> Just get across the obstacle course first. Alright, so we were so hungry and excited to be in a fully vegan restaurant like that that we just completely forgot to record, which is devastating because it was really good and the staff were the friendliest people we've met in Armenia so far. Aprilin got a photo. Oh yes, <laughs> nice. Wait. Oh, there we are. Please come here. It's so nice. You might even come back. Who knows? Okay. That's so nice, thank you. I left my sunglasses, which is always Oscar's thing to do, by <laughs> I the way. Know. And she ran, like literally, how far is this? We walked for like four minutes. She ran and gave them to me. We have to go back. Wow, first time finding vegan milk on this trip. In the Caucasus, or actually in we, Georgia. To be fair, we didn't check in yeah. Georgia. Yeah. But, oh my God, a jelly cake. cake. Wow. Perfect to stuff your face in. <laughs> Look at this, how cool. 
Wow, it's projected onto the ground. How cool is that? So when we landed last night, the city was like so alive and we're like, what's going on? Like, is there some special day or something? And in the hotel reception, they were like, no, it's just a normal weekday night. And so apparently there's a party in this square every single night. So we're waiting for it party. to start. Yeah, I mean, party. it's just that people gather, I guess. Festivities. Armenia is coming for Dubai with a light show and it starts in eight minutes. So we're going to stay here to check it out. Temperature has become so pleasant. The vibe is great. People are just hanging out and enjoying themselves in definitely the most beautiful part of Yemen. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh my god, Armenian food deluxe. Look at this. It's really interesting because since there's such a big uh, Armenian diaspora, Armenian food comes in all different shapes and sizes, apparently, <laughs> depending on where, you know, the Armenians live. It's very influenced by the Middle East, but like an Armenian twist. Yes. So we have dolma, Köfte, fried cauliflower, falafel, uh, something, <laughs> and hummus. This fried cauliflower is mm. amazing. It's amazing. Mm. Mm. Oh my god! I think mm. there's pomegranate syrup in the dolma. The cauliflower is so good. You weren't kidding. Mm -hmm. mm. We've got some eggplant. Got some bulgur. Mm. Oh my god! This smells so good. This eggplant is insane. So hot. But so good. <laughs> It was so good. Really, good. really I'm loved glad it. You yeah. Like it. Do you live here or you're on holiday? No, just, just on holiday for a few uh, days. Why did you decide to move back to Armenia? Before the COVID, we thought yeah. it's our homeland. Let's yeah. try something different. Are there a lot of Armenians like moving, like the diaspora moving back to the homeland, or? Um, actually, the young, uh, to be honest, the young generation. When I say young generation, like. Uh, between the age of 25 and 45 and 50, uh -huh. they just want to sell our homeland. So yeah. you might as well go there and start business and uh, yeah. you know, replenish the country. Huh. And, uh, we're trying. You know, Armenia is ancient. It's history, historical buildings and everything. You know, yeah. <clears throat> I love, I love both countries. Well, thank you for sharing the wonderful food with us. <laughs> try it, try it. This is an iconic Yerevan thing. Look out, look out. Water it's yeah. traffic. After an amazing brunch, we hopped in the car to go see the national symbol of Armenia, Mount Ararat, right by one of the most intense and complex border regions we've ever been to. More on that later. This gives me a little bit Italy vibes when we went to the Call Me By Your Name location. If you want to watch that video, it's very old. It's going to be in a car here. It's very kind of quaint countryside village, but the difference is there are some very dramatic countries right across the border. Wait, dramatic <laughs> countries? There's some very dramatic mountains right across the border. So the significant part of this monastery and its location is that it's right underneath the very famous and I guess holy mountain Arara, which is the believed location where Noah's Ark landed after the big flood. So it has obviously a big uh, place in Christianity and I guess maybe in Abrahamic religions overall, but it's on the opposite side of the border in Turkey. So you can't actually drive across the land border because it's close between Armenia and Turkey. So we can see it from the monastery, but we can't access it. So that right there is Mount Ararat. Unfortunately, you can't see much of it since it's covered in clouds. Wish the clouds were over here to protect us from this heat, but it is still incredibly beautiful here. So the monastery we're at here is called Korvirap, and it's supposedly the place where Gregory the Illuminator was kept captive. And what's pretty cool about him is that he was the first person who brought Christianity to Armenia as a country as a whole. Basically, the guy who brought Christianity to the first ever country was captured over there. Also, they say that the village where Noah from Noah's Ark lived is right over there. So since we're in a very like complicated border area right here, we have Azerbaijan, we have Turkey, we have Armenia, and we also have Iran. And so hopefully we're going to be able to see four countries in one. I'm not sure about Azerbaijan, but maybe three, maybe four. Well, here's a border 
crossing. But I guess it's abandoned because Turkey's on the other side. You can't get in. There used to be a border crossing into Turkey from Armenia, but it's been like closed since, you know, several like years or even decades. So I guess that used to be the main border crossing, which is just crazy because it looked completely abandoned now. We're literally driving right along the border fence between Turkey and Armenia right now. It's quite crazy. There was this incredibly cool moment where we drove past the border. There was the fence on the Armenian side, the fence on the Turkish side. And there were two men, older men, standing on either side. So one was in Turkey, one was in Armenia, just sort of staring at each other. And I was like, this is definitely the start of a plot for a movie. And now I think we have as good a view as we'll have. I don't know if we can see Azerbaijan, I don't think so. But I think those mountains down there are Iran. So that's Turkey. That's Iran, obviously this is Armenia. And it's so crazy to be looking at Iran because that's one of those countries, sort of like Saudi Arabia for us, that's just so mysterious. Since I was nine, one of my best friends in the world is Iranian. So I've heard so much about Iran. I spent time with his family. Of course, everyone who's been to Iran says they have literally the most friendly people ever. So I really hope that one day Oscar and I can go, even though it's not necessarily the easiest place for all types of people. But seeing it from here is like seeing such a mystical, intriguing place. That's sort of like forbidden fruit, you know? So I drove back to Yerevan, which I'm very proud of because I haven't been driving for as long as Oscar and I've only driven in six countries. We went back into the town. Now we're gonna climb the Cascade, which is probably the most famous site in all of Yerevan. Just gotta show you this. The opera. Where's the phantom? Under the opera house. And finally, oh wow, and finally we have made it the cascade, the steps. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear me because it's very windy right now, but that's a good thing because it's really hot and we're gonna climb all these steps now. So the wind is helping. <laughs> Look, this whole um, line, tiger, is made with tires. Look at that. There's traditional dancing going on with a bunch of, I guess, mainly teenagers. Just, we're just sitting here like, oh, look at the city. And then we're like, wait a minute. We can just make out Mount Ararat on the horizon. See this? Yeah, on a clear day, you can see it much, much better than us. This is such a cool sight. And also it's not at all as hard to climb as it looks. We saw all these people walking around with bubble tea, my favorite drink. We realized there's a really popular place right here. So we're gonna check it out. So, strawberry matcha latte, one of the best flavors in existence. Wow, it's very good. Mm, good job, gotcha. Like water? Like H2O? Yeah. Good morning guys, it is day number three and today only April Lynn and I are heading out because Oscar is not feeling well and we don't want him to feel any worse. He said he wants us to go out and not all waste the last day in the room so he's not feeling good enough to go out. But we are heading to Lake Seban, one of the most beautiful and famous sites in the country which we're so excited about but it's a bit bittersweet knowing that Oscar can't come. Then again, this is a benefit of being three people traveling that April Lynn is here but at least two of us can do something when the other is sick. We made it to Lake Sevan. It was a bit of a chaotic drive, but it was so 
stunning. The nature, the mountains, and now this is even better. The water is so crystal clear. So we're starting out before we go for a swim by climbing up to, I think it's a monastery, which has a beautiful view. It gives me very Mamma Mia Greece wedding vibes. As soon as you go out of the city, it feels so nice, right? Every time, every time you leave a city, it's like, ah, this is where you're supposed to be. Now I'm so sad Oscar isn't here because this is definitely the highlight of Armenia for me in terms of natural beauty. The air is just so cooling. I could sit here all day. I just feel like these types of places, it's so sad when they don't tap into the full potential of them. Instead, there's very little information and the information there is, is sort of, you know, not super helpful. If Berlin is about to try Gata, what do you think? Uh, uh, there's something inside, right? So there's all these little cute stalls here in the parking lot. We think some of them might have something to eat. So we're gonna see if there's anything interesting here before we head to swim. I have high hopes for this place. Uh, no, no. Orange. Orange. I mean, $30, that would, you wouldn't even pay that in Singapore, right? No worries. One minute? Yeah, it's whatever. We don't, we don't have time. Sorry, come. Let's just go. It's a total scam. It's a total scam. They tried to charge us $25 per juice. They said it's $50. What a joke. So a beautiful ride later and we are by a beach by Lake Savan. I'm so excited to jump into this water. I hope it's not too cold because it looks amazing. This private beach was only a thousand, uh, I was about to say a thousand dollars. I was like, ooh. And I, ooh. But it was only a thousand AMD to get in here, which isn't bad considering they have all types of facilities and there should be less people, but we just can't get over that scam. $30 per juice. You wouldn't be charged that in Switzerland. Not a very believable scam. The nature right here reminds me a lot of Sweden with the pine trees and everything, so it's giving me a bit of homesickness. But the lake definitely does not look like Sweden. Oh, <laughs> which hop is it? <laughs> Just sitting here chatting with Oscar with us in our minds. Today it's April Lynn and Dan, not Oscar and Dan. <laughs> so if I was coming back here, I would definitely try to stay the night specifically in this square cabin. It has a glass wall with views all out over the lake. And I gotta say, this is definitely my favorite stop in Armenia. So after a wonderful hour and a half here at the lake, we're heading back to Yerevan to return our rental car to find Oscar to get some food. And then we need an early night because we are heading home tomorrow at 4.30 a.m. <laughs> Sick Oscar, April in. Such a sad way to end the trip. I mean, April Lynn and I had a good day, but poor Oscar is not feeling well. And we're getting up at 4 a.m. tomorrow, so I think it's time to head to sleep. This is bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Maybe you wave? No, stop. She was waving. Oh, okay, okay. Bye. See you around the world. <laughs> You see these little envelopes? These are us exercising our democratic rights because there's an election in Sweden in September. We won't be there, so we ordered mail votes. We're sending in our votes all the way from Armenia. It feels so fun, especially to think that like in this envelope is part of us deciding the future of our country. <laughs>